pass it. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, uh, I first met him in the year 2008 and uh, he came to me as a teacher, as a professor at the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. And he took a course on national development and globalization. And uh, he's such a, I mean, beyond the professional life which we know him. In his personal life, he's, he's such an aura that the very first few minutes you spend with him, he gives you something you can remember for the rest of your life. I'll tell you something which I saw uh, and I observed in him. The very first few moments I met him. We were, uh, uh, he came to Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad is a very famous airport called Sardar Vallabhai Patel Airport. Now this Sardar Vallabhai Patel Airport is about 45 minutes away from the IM campus. Thick traffic. So we decided that, you know, two, one student representative and one faculty will go and greet Dr. Kalam at the airport. Bring him not to the campus for that day. It's evening and the next day he's got classes. So that evening we thought we'll bring him to the circuit house, which is the government circuit house where he was supposed to stay, which is about one kilometer from the airport. So, and there at the government circuit house, the director of IM will come and greet him, go away. So that he has to travel minimal because next day 9, 8.45 he had classes. So what happened is, uh, he landed at the airport, he went to that, I saw him, of course he went to the lounge and I met him in the lounge first time and then uh, we told him, sir, you, we'll take you to the government guest house, it's about five minutes and then the director is coming there, he will come and greet you. No, I didn't know him, I was just a student. So he said, no, 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 we'll not do this. So I thought something has gone wrong, he's the president of India, so popular man, maybe something wrong we did. So he said, no, he told the secretary that, tell them, we will go to IIM. Okay, I still didn't know why is he going to IIM. So the entire convoy of about 9, 10 vehicles, it moved 45 minutes from the airport at about 8.30 in the night to the IIM campus. There he met the director and he said, I didn't want you to come there. See, outside these walls, I may be the former president. I may be missile man, whatever, but inside this campus, when I'm here, I'm as a professor of the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. You are the director of IIM Ahmedabad. You don't come and greet me. I come and pay you my regards. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that humility, okay, yeah. it traveled in the class. The word traveled in the class. Mm -hmm. And uh, naturally, all students were just uh, influenced by him mm -hmm. next day. So, you know, he had this art which came from within, you know, something which was ingrained in him. And that was fed by the fact that he had immense humility. Mm -hmm. He had immense, not just humility, also sensitivity to other people. So he would always have this sensitivity to everyone around, uh, regardless of whether there was a person who was driving him for the first time and the last time in his life, or whatever, you know, whoever he'd come across. And the third thing he had was positivity, positivism. So I remember, now, I often had a running nose, especially in Delhi, when the pollination season is there, my nose starts running. So I remember, you know, in Delhi, uh, I was there and Delhi has a season of pollination, you know, pollens are all over and I have an allergy and my nose used to start running and that would go on for a day. And whenever that will happen, he would come up and say, he'll never say, are you ill? He'll never say, are you sick? He will always say that, are you under repair? <laughs> And the next day he will follow up, repaired, <laughs> are you repaired? So you see, even simple things in life, he knew how to make difficult situations with some humor, with a lot of positivity, how to handle, you know, pains of people's lives. And that went on to the very last year of his life. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of you would have uh, heard and read about the last eight hours with Dr. Kalam, which is a blog which I wrote uh, on the unfortunate day he passed away. And he had the sensitivity to see that a guard was standing in the car ahead of him, the pilot car. There was a guard who was standing for three hours and he could see that and only see that, do something about it. So he tried to make him sit down. The guard could not hear because they called on a phone. He tried to hand signal him. He could not understand. So even when he could not do that and when he reached I am Shillong, he called that guard and said a magical word. Thank you.
-hmm. And then says, sorry, I, I tried to make you sit down, but I could not convey to you. And then he offered him his own tea, that why don't you get him tea as well? Mm -hmm. You see, the sensitivity to every person around him was something which was immensely, that's what made him from a very good scientist, a very good missile scientist or a very good DRDO chief into a wonderful president. The great president happens. And even after the president, being the people's president, being on their minds and inspirations for many years after he uh, finished his presidency, is, happens not because he was only brilliant or not because he was only very intelligent, but because he was a man who was very human. Mm. I think that is the biggest message which Dr. Kalam's life shows. And it shows in the fact that, you know, when he passed away on uh, 27th, he passed away in the evening, 6, uh, 640, he fell. By 8.30, they had declared that he's no more. I brought him uh, with a colleague of mine who had gone with him. We brought him from Shillong to Guwahati, from Guwahati to Delhi. And his family decided that they want to, uh, you know, do his last rites in Rameshwaram. So on 28th, he was in Delhi. 29th, we took him to Rameshwaram. And we reached again around day because it's very difficult. They were taken on a Hercules plane, C-130, which travels really slow. Mm -hmm. It takes four hours to reach from Delhi to Chennai and then Chennai to Madurai and Madurai to Rameshwaram. It's a big journey. Now, even then, I saw his drivers from Bihar, from Bengal, people who would have driven him there, people who were his private security officers, you know, that government guard who was with the driver. One guy always stands behind a VIP and this guy is allotted locally. He's a local policeman from Kerala, from Bihar, from Delhi. All these people had come and I have wondered that, you know, this guy would have spent his own money. There's no way he could take a train. He would have taken a flight to Madurai, traveled all the way here in a notice of a single day. That's the magic of a man. They had no vested interest. They were not even sure whether they'll be allowed to see him because they were regular people now. And yet they would choose to take that risk, that tremendously difficult and expensive mm -hmm. journey to, uh, because uh, there was one moment when Dr. Kalam would have just shook their hand mm -hmm. and said, thank you, you did a good job. Can I write a note for you? And he wrote a note. I, I, can I take a photo? If you want a photo, I'll give you a photo. Or give him a book, you know. He would take his own book, write his name and give it to his children. So that, you know, winning, the art of winning over people naturally is something which is something which Dr. Kalam's life is a, is a great example and that also kept him happy. Uh, we have to understand his dreams are not, uh, were never kind of designed for his own lifetime. His dreams were designed 50 years, 100 years into time and many such dreams exist. The nearest dream is the fact that he wanted to see an economically developed and socially equitable India by the year 2020 or before. I think that's one dream. And his biggest faith in the dream were the younger people. He believed that if everybody can do that little contribution for India in their own circles, whether you're in business or in media or you're in education or you're teaching someone or you're a professional somewhere, if you can devote some part of your thought and time and effort for the country and towards making the country a better country, then the vision 2020 could be realized. I think this is one unfulfilled dream of his which has a deadline to it and the country now has to give back to the man who gave so much and uh, that's one thing which I want to work personally I'm working on it many things we are trying to align many other people are also doing that and uh, I think more and more people need to get engaged and you don't need to, to get engaged you don't need to start and start anything on the street you can do it within your workplace within your school within your books within your classroom and do something for not just uh, remembering Dr. Kalam or reading about him, but also becoming a Kalam in your own home, in your own office.